shake it off and move on. Two wires in this, can you see? Get out of my way. Which sounds ridiculous. Oh my God. Will this be enough? Around a hover. The price of my van build up to this point. Welcome back to the van build. So far, hopefully you've seen my windows and my fans and my bed frame, which I'm making changes to later. But our next project is something that I have been pretty nervous about. So today I'm doing the pre-wiring in my van. Now, this video is going to be all about the, like I said, the pre-wiring of the van. I'm not gonna show you how my accessories hook up to my wires. That'll be for a later video because this is one of the parts of the van build that there doesn't seem to be much straightforward information about. So I want to dedicate this whole video to those people that have zero electrical experience, that barely understand the basics, so that you can have a really good idea of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Hopefully, so that you can make decisions based on your van build that will work really well for you. To start off, I am keeping my build fairly simple. So I am going to use puck lights in the ceilings and under some cabinets in the kitchen. I will be purchasing a 12 volt Dometic fridge. I will be running two max air fans. I think I'm going to go with a foot pump just to conserve water and keep things really simple for me. I will not have any heating or cooling hooked up to my solar setup, which will be 200 watt solar panels from Renogy, one battery, a thousand watt inverter. I will have a fuse panel and a charge controller. If you have no idea what those things just meant, that's okay. I'm gonna do a completely different video specifically on my solar system, what everything means, why I chose all of the pieces that I chose and how I put it all together. So if that just spiked your anxiety, shake it off and move on. First, let's talk about the wire that I chose and why. This is 12-2 wire. Two wires in this, can you see? 12 gauge wire, and there are two that are connected. So everything that I'm using is for DC. DC just means direct current. So there's AC and there's DC, hence AC, DC. An AC system needs a ground. The DC system does not require a ground. For example, when you go to purchase your puck light, you may notice that to connect that light, there may be three wires. One of those is a ground wire. If you get a puck light that is specifically for DC, there will only be two wires. If there is something that will be connected to your inverter, it will be an AC system. So your energy will be coming in, the inverter changes it to AC, alternating current. It will have a ground wire. Another thing about the wire is you always want to get stranded wire. Do I know why? I don't, but I'll find out for you. Now you might be saying, whoa, well, Lene in other videos, people mentioned using 14 gauge wire. Correct. 14 gauge wire is smaller than 12 gauge. Let's say we have this wire and there is a specific size current running through this wire that a 12 gauge wire can handle. If you put that same current into a much smaller wire, that current is being forced through a smaller wire. That is what can create a lot of heat. You don't want hot wires. You don't want to burn down the van that you just spent hours and hours and hours and so much money and more hours working on. Kia! I think she's getting bored about all this electrical talk. Now, I want you also to keep in mind that about three months ago, I knew absolutely nothing about electrical stuff, about volts, amp hours, wattage, none of that. So just know, if you take it nice and slow, it will make sense to you eventually. I, oh my gosh, this door almost slammed on you. And by you, I mean my camera. So for now, I think that that is enough information to start with. For a simple setup, 12 gauge wire will be great for pretty much anything you need. Let's get to work, shall we? All right, so, so far I have run two wires. So this back left wheel well is where all of my solar junk will be. So my charge controller, my fuse box, my battery bank, everything will be branching off from that. So you can see the two wires that I started with right here. So first of all, I'm making sure that everything is labeled really well on both ends of my wires. For my rear fan, I ran it up through just the natural holes in the framing. Up here, I needed to decide kind of how I wanted to branch off. I know that I'm going to frame this window, so really the wires will sit like this above my framing for my window. And then I went ahead and I put my 12 gauge wire through here, up here, and ran it through this empty space. 
then it all comes out right here right next to my rear fan and of course made sure to label it so one of my buddies who does a lot of electrical stuff he said that when you're doing pre-wiring make sure that you leave like three feet of extra wire on both ends he said you never know when you're gonna need to pull wire through or if you mess up it's worth spending that little bit of extra money and maybe wasting some of that wire than um, needing to rerun it after all of your stuff is um, hidden behind your walls okay so something that i want to talk about is the fact that the edges of the van are very sharp i'm going to throw a clip in here from the video of me doing my insulation it's a pretty good gash and i sliced it from pulling some of my insulation through here and that can happen to your wires which would be very 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 bad even just from running the wire for my front fan I wanted to show you what was accumulated so I don't know can you see this if it's not obvious what this is <laughs> it's this outer coating peeling from me pulling it through the that hole in the van one of the best things is to make sure they're really protected so that down the road and over time and with wear that outside coating doesn't get worn away and expose your wires to your metal van um, I did pick up some conduit that's already split and then I picked up some rubber grommets that I'm going to use in areas that are a little bit tighter this is what a rubber grommet looks like and I decided to cut mine because you'll notice that with these vans the holes aren't a perfect circle this way I can kind of shape it to how I I need it that's actually a really nice fit and that is not going anywhere so I'm going to probably get a few more of those for the tight spaces and then rely on conduit for the spaces that I'm not super concerned about. All right, the next thing that I'm gonna do is focus on my lights, which will be run in series. But we should probably take a look at Akilah really quick because she's so cute. Hi, my favorite thing. So, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I traveled from Utah to Wisconsin and now I need to travel back because that is currently where my home is, Utah. So what I'm going to do, I know I haven't finished all of my pre-wiring, but I'm just gonna be leaving in like two days. I am just going to use some zip ties and make sure that everything is in really nice, neat little bundles everywhere and it'll just make the process a lot more neat and a lot more easy to, hmm, easy to what? Easy to manage as I travel. Get out of my way. So I did need to get um, more wiring. I ended up using, whoa. So I used uh, 100 feet of that 12 volt wire, which sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous to me too, don't worry. But I am making sure that I have a lot extra on both ends, like I told you before, because if I mess up multiple times, which very well could happen, or if I want to adjust kind of where my wires are or something, um, then I'll have enough to do so. So I'd rather just play it safe, have an obnoxious amount of extra than, you know, have to figure it out after the fact. So, all right, I'm gonna start running the wires for my lights. I actually have no idea how I want to do this. So I've decided that I just, I'm gonna drill through these framing pieces going over top. So a good drill bit for metal. I need my three strand wire. Probably pick up a little bit more conduit. I would like some silicone. I'm gonna need to use it for my floor anyway when I lay that down. I've got four things to get at Home Depot. You wanna come? <sighs> okay, so I didn't get everything that I thought I would. So I went in there with the intention of getting my AC wires, which would include a three strand wire. Um, but then I started remembering that I had watched videos previously about people using different things. So I know that you can use an extension cord and I didn't want to jump the gun and I didn't want to just purchase a wire that I'm not going to use. Oh my God. So basically what I'm trying to say is when you think you've done enough research, you probably haven't. Tonight, I am going to do some research and figure out exactly what I want to use for my AC system. Also, another thought that I had in there, I mean, if I'm being real, I don't know how switches come into play with this. And I know there's going to be a lot of people watching this that's like, you should have figured all of this out 
weeks ago. And yeah, I freaking did until I decided to do other things. So tonight is going to be nailing down some of these details that I thought I knew and finishing my DC wiring. <laughs> this is the reality of this stuff. There were some videos that talked about doing your LED lights in series. And the more that I do my research, the more that doesn't make any sense. Um, basically, they need to be run in parallel. And if you have no idea what that means, check out the articles that I have linked below and it will make sense eventually. So I'm actually gonna hold off on any ceiling electrical. That actually makes me feel great. That means I might not need any of those wires that I put for those small LED lights underneath my cabinets. I'm going to take those wires out. Yep. I'm actually gonna order this stuff right now. I'll get here by August 2nd. LED DC 12 volt. That's exactly what I want. Warm white. Okay, boom. Order. So today, didn't feel as productive as I had planned, which kind of seems the norm, actually. Ugh, my van is locked. So, here's the deal. So originally with some van build videos, I had seen people or hear them say that they installed their LED lights in series. And the more research I did today, that actually does not make sense at all. There were a few articles and a few videos today that said you actually cannot hook up LED lights in series. They need to be in parallel. So all of my puck lights, all of my LED lights are going to be run in parallel. Um, for each appliance, I will show exactly how I install it and what wires I'm using. So my last few steps for this initial pre-wiring process. I'm gonna finish running my DC stuff other than my lights. I'm gonna pull out those wires I don't want and then I'm gonna make sure all of my wires are protected whether that's with conduit, rubber grommets, some silicone and I'll show you how I do that. So these were supposed to be my bed lights but now my bed lights are gonna be run in parallel not in series. I would say like try to plan this stuff ahead of time, but I thought I did that, so. All learning process. My thought process is I know my sink is gonna go right here so if I have a wire run right next to that if I want to include an electric water pump it'll just be available for me in my wall I'm actually gonna just coil this up okay that little guy's gonna live right there I actually might do one more in case I want like a little water heater I'm gonna do one more all right, so yesterday I finished running those two extra wires. So I wanted to show you how and why I did what I did. So the wires come up through there, through here, and then they come on down here. Here is one set. I obviously have a lot extra considering I don't know exactly where it might go. And then I labeled it. So extra number one, and then this one, extra number two. And then when I put my paneling up, I'll just kind of make a little mark so I know where I could drill to like snip that and pull it out. And then on this other side, which is probably more important even than labeling that side is making sure that these also are labeled so this goes to extra number one and this goes to extra number two so my last step for this little pre-wiring phase is to make sure everything is really protected so i'm going to go ahead and use my conduit and my rubber grommets and see what i can do to make sure everything doesn't get worn down by the van. The rubber grommets are awesome as long as they fit. So I'm cutting them um, and then placing them in whatever hole I need. And even if, like a lot of them are fitting snugly but not perfectly, so I'm adding silicone. I'll try to show you over here. It's messy, so sorry. This rubber grommet is perfect for these wires. Granted, this hole is huge. So I'm using silicone to close the gap and then to um, just make it stay in place. The wires are pulled through going up anyway, so it didn't necessarily want to fall, but just in case, I'm just adding that extra kind of protection there. With this weird hole, check this out, call me a genius. I used some plastic conduit instead, and then I actually just filled it with silicone. So it's kind of like a homemade rubber grommet and it's, it's working really beautifully. 
I've also been using electrical tape. These two like holes that they're going through are super sharp, so. It's one thing if like I get hurt or whatever. It's another thing if Akila gets hurt. So a lot of my motivation for making things extra safe is to keep my dog safe. People might think that's actually nuts, but that's my reality. I'm done, I think. This is a little bit of what I've done. <sighs> okay, so I'm looking around at my pre-wiring and I am A, happy it's done for now, and B, I'm pretty proud of myself. I think I did an okay job for never doing this before. Of course there is more wiring to do, and like I had explained earlier in the video, I'm going to do that other wiring as I install my things. So a lot of that will happen when I install my ceiling. That'll be a big video. Yesterday was a rough day for me. I was super overwhelmed and frustrated with how things were going. Um, but ultimately today I feel like I'm in a really good spot and made some solid decisions with my wiring and Kind of in turn. I have a clear plan of what I need to do moving forward um, I am going to keep all of well, you can't see it because you're looking at me but um, all of my extra wires and conduit and rubber grommets and electrical tape. I'm going to keep all of that obviously because there's more to do, but also um, if I notice areas that I missed or while I am installing things, I'm still going to be using my conduit and anything to protect the wires. All right, let's get into how much this has cost. So this project alone, so just the pre-wiring with the conduit and stuff cost me around a hover... <laughs> about $179. Now, if you know what you're doing already, and if you have some of the tools to do this, you will not spend as much money as I did. The price of my van build up to this point is $2,371.98. I might have gone over this already, but really my hope for this van build encompasses three things. One, it needs to be on a budget for sure. Two, I want my money to go towards quality things that I won't have to repair or replace too often. And three, I want it to be comfortable enough to where I want to do it for multiple years. So with those three things that I mentioned, I'm really trying to find a balance there. And so far I'm pretty happy with my choices and where my money's gone. So at least that's good. All right, I'm going to move into something that I'm not gonna film because it's pretty simple, but I'll explain. In my insulation video, I explained that for some of the cavities, I wasn't gonna fill quite yet until I was done with wiring. So I have a bunch of scraps here along with some of my roll left. So I'm gonna finish stuffing the rest of my insulation into the cavities that aren't full yet. And I'm going to insulate that. Oh, make sure to hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. You don't have to if you didn't like it. But if you got this far, I'm assuming you liked it. See you in a week.